Alright, hello guys and welcome to the next video in the Compass series. Today uh, we're just gonna do a quick gaming video on Nidhong, which is the latest character that's released. We're gonna do our first impressions and things that we already know about him and how he will more or less be used as of this moment. So let's take it away with the first game and I hope you guys enjoy it. Alright guys and here we go with our first game of the day and let's just give a quick neat hot rundown on his skills and abilities while we watch the gameplay itself. Okay, first of all, Nidhogg is a gunner, but he has pretty much attacker stats. Look at his crazy ass stats. It's 1.35 attack, 1.45 defense at 0.95 HP. That's not your usual typical gunner stats. Then uh, his move speed is one of the more important things. He is slower than Gustav, Rika, and Amairo, but he's faster than Tadaomi. Maria and Gilgamesh, putting him somewhere in the lower half and have seven, having 70% of the cast being faster than him. His range is the lowest amongst all gunners but he has extreme attack speed like Magu Magu and has a multiplier of 0.46 that's like 3 hits per second. So this is really how you want to build around him and which is why we are looking at this deck here. This deck is a double attack up deck that utilizes both his HA and his normal spooling. These are, these are, there are two ways to be around it and I'm going to be showing you guys both. One is defense down on the opponent and one is attack up on yourself. And we will talk about his ability and hero actions in a bit. So his ability is going to kick in in the 2 minutes mark. 1 minute into the game, your HS gauge will, you will start gaining HS faster after 1 minute has passed into the game. And due to his low range, I'm really not able to just walk straight and get myself, like stay a fire and fight like a gunner, that's not how he works. He's an infighter, like, like Maria with a little more range. So you want to shield and you're probably gonna, I'm gonna, probably going to eat Kanone here and die. Yeah, which I did. Uh, the thing is, you can't treat him like a gunner, but he has the properties of the gunner because of his HA and HS. That's really neat. If it comes to a, an actual team fight, which he is really good at due to his, the amount of damage he puts out, he is an attacker. Like, oh no, I'm gonna get stunned again, which is really bad for me, but that's okay, because of his stats. He has 1.45 defense stats, I have 443 defense, and that's really a lot for <laughs> combat. He's not a squishy character, so let's just be honest. He has good HP, he has good defense, he just don't have good range. And he, when you downswipe on his attack, right, it really does a shit ton of damage. So you, you want to have good attack, and you want to have good decks that complement this entire playstyle. Unfortunately over here uh, my HS got stolen so I had to run away and that's where my HA come in because uh, he was staying still to try and attack and you have to use a HA when your opponent is like either not moving or immobilized. It, it really depends on how you want to do it. And if I was able to stay even further away, I probably wouldn't have died to that Hinata, but because of how he actually plays, you have to go in and unfortunately, you have to deal with that kind of shit every other day. Uh, okay, so that's the first game for you, let's go into the second game and I will continue uh, letting you know how other builds can work. You will be able to see the Showbreaker build next and let's just get straight into it.
Okay, here comes the start of the second game, and this time we have a Dizzy in our team. Now, uh, to continue with, right, uh, due to how his HA works, alright, you, you fire a beam that has no fall of damage. Okay, it consumes HS gauge, which basically works well with his ability that allows you to gain more HS gauge later into the game. The beam does not go through walls, which is great. If it did, it will be too stupid, and it, but it's not so. Which means it's not effective in certain maps, and each hit right does only slightly higher than his normals per hit. It is also slower, doing damage like around one to two hits per second on hit. Alright, then the thing here to note is that the, your HS gauge will continue to charge even while you are firing your HA. Now I'm using this shield breaker view which a lot of Nick Hawk users are using is because you can debuff the opponent from afar and then fire your beam at them for uh, the extra damage. The 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 way you do this right is when you hit with your HA at far range, your opponent will be forced to use shields and shields before the next fight starts. And that's where your team will go in. Right now we have a team of three gunners, so that is really not possible. So I will continue to try and poke them from extreme range like how this Nidhogg is doing to me. I am very lucky because I have an Amelia with me that is healing me while I'm being poked. So over there you see after using Shield Breaker, I just need 1800 to stun. And I'm trying to hit that other Nidhogg with my pokes as well. This is how I really use the laser. I swing it zigzag. So that he, take, he takes a hit no, even if he is trying to dodge. Now in, in, a to in that way, like when Ice was immobilized between three gunners and a laser beam, she's just gonna die. You know me? I, I have this Abakan built I have Abakan built in on this because Nick Hawk can has such great normals that once you manage to Abakan and shoot like Use shield breaker or mama on a person. That guy is usually going to die. Like, like, look, let's take a look at how Son died just now. So Son, Son was basically just uh, melted one v one because I had a uh, shield breaker on. If I had Abakan him dead, or if I had Abakan anyone who is trying to attack me, they will still have died. So that's why I have Abakan on to be used as a defensive option and not really an offensive one. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I know his Jaeger was going to disappear. I tried to Abakan, he used HS and I had to, I'm forced to heal. But uh, look at that, that was a down, that, that was just a shield breaker into normals and Ice was already melting. Sure, this is rank. I believe I have a higher deck level than them, but that's not really why why this is working all right the reason why this is working is simply because his normal attack are really that good this is what you want to rely on if possible if not uh, and his hs look at this i'm just using his hs that is almost up to 11 seconds to block this off and even if son came earlier or i ended earlier my missiles would have landed and there's a total of like 14 seconds of delay on the defensive portal. So make full use of his HS as and when you can. And let's go straight into the last game, which we will, fire, we will talk a little more, and that should be it for the day. Okay, so here's the third and final game, and I'm doing free battle this time because I I am trying to let guy, you guys take a look at uh, how the HA is going to be used. So for this third game, we will once again be talking about how you want to really utilize him. Okay, you, you don't want to... Uh, you don't want to just keep spamming HA and hope for extra damage. Right, you use it as a poke, you just waste a little bit of your HS and make your opponent feel like they will, they need to use a heal or else it's going to be a problem. You won't work with teams that has a genie in it because every time you poke, you're just going to you're just gonna heal it back. You won't work with Amelia because it's the same thing. As long as they have some form of auto heal, it's not going to work. But if they don't have a form of auto heal, you will benefit from the long range folks. And not only that, whenever you see an opportunity to HA, you should. 
Because rather than you spending like 3 to 5 seconds to run over to get to your 5 square range, your HA should be doing the work for you. This is the exact playstyle of Magu Magu, but with much shorter range. I use attack up and I fire on someone. We're, we're, we're trading shots right now. I'm, I'm doing 480 to him, he's doing 400 to me. So I am doing a little better because I have attack up and now I have the team attack up which increases my attack by even more. Alright, unfortunately my team died and I didn't want to really waste the I, yeah, I didn't want to waste the attack buff that I had on me, so I went forward, which was a mistake from me. And this is where we are starting to play from behind. And that's okay, because first of all, it's 2 minutes in, and our HS charge rate is going to have, be, have increased by now. So take a look at when I'm expanding portal, you'll see that my HS is still going up. And I'm using HA here because there was no way I could have reached there in time. And they were using cards on my Adam, which means they were not moving. And that allowed me to deal like a thousand plus to that guy. Now he's at 261 damage because it's really not worth it. So you go forward and then you wait for your attack buff before you do anything else. And over here, me and Aqua will be fighting this poor little guy here. He already used up all, uh, he, she already used up all his other cards. So there wasn't much he can do. We had a team attack buff. That other Nidhogg is dead, and I have an 8 second shield, so I was fine for a little bit, and I managed to kill off Kai as well just by having that attack buff. That is how strong, like honestly his normals is what you really want to be focused on. I don't, I know the laser is cool and all, and the HS is, looks really good, but that is not what you want to focus on. He's like a walking turret. He's a, he's a, he's this giant, <laughs> gigantic turret. Who can do a lot of damage if you don't do anything to him? Yeah, I almost died here because of the laser, and that, that's where the poking comes in. But that's not how you want to utilize the laser. The other opponent, Nihok, is going to be at a, a range that is way too far for him to help his team. You shouldn't do that. You 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 are just allowing your team members to get your them into a two v three while they are taking the brunt of the damage. You know? Okay, so I'm going to eat Aqua, Aqua HS here because I'm, I try my best to survive. I use attack up again, which increases my attack up to one, like almost an extra hundred percent. That's crazy. I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, that that card is just crazy as good because of how much attack increases, and I, and that's it. So, so if you the two different views is you either cast defense down on your opponent, or you cast attack up on yourself. And that's how you want to play for most part. Remember, uh, bottom line in the whole thing is you want to make sure your opponent is not moving when you're firing your HA, and you are doing stuffs like you are really doing being productive while in a fight. The way for him to do it is is to make sure he is in the range of your enemies, or rather, he, your enemies are in the range of you during a team fight. Be the turret that can do, do a shit ton of damage in a team fight, and not the guy who stands far, far away and hope to deal a few thousand damage in and pray that your team does all the other work for you. His HA should be used like a Magu HA when your opponents are knocked down and stuff, you do the extra chip damage or you do the extra damage that might land you a kill. Don't rely on it. The HS is good. Use it to extend and defend portal. Use it to like a justice to spread things all over. Make sure your opponents need to run around instead of capturing. That's pretty much it. So that's it for today and I'll see you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do enjoy the video, do subscribe, like and subscribe. And then I'll see you guys in another video for a character soon. Alright, see you guys. Bye bye.